gentlemen, uh, welcome to the next Expo 2013. I'm uh, Theo Sabutis, the Chief yeah. Executive Officer of, of no. Avian Media no. Network. I would like to thank you for your attendance to our event and for your support. Uh, we, we try to, to improve it every year and to uh, fulfill your uh, needs in an industry that is facing a lot of problems, but at the same time it has uh, a very nice quality of people. It's a very interesting uh, industry to be in. Uh, I would like to uh, introduce to you Carl Bernand, the president of Gamma Entertainment. And uh, I'm excited as uh, you to hear what he has to say today. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Carl Bernard. I'm the president and founder of uh, Gamma Entertainment. Um, Today I'm going to try to tell you a bit of uh, our story. Uh, hopefully you're going to find that uh, inspiring. So let me just find a clicker. So when Theo asked me uh, to be the keynote speaker, uh, my first reaction was uh, to decline. Uh, I'm not a very public person, so I don't like uh, getting attention. That's a lot of attention. So I'm a bit nervous. Um, so first, a bit about Gamma Entertainment, for those uh, of you that might know us, know us a bit less. Uh, we're established uh, in 1996, we're based in Montreal, Canada. So in case you've noticed my strong uh, accent, it's because my first language is French. Um, so what Gamma Entertainment does, uh, mostly we manage and run uh, adult websites. Uh, we're a company focused on technology, marketing, and partnerships. Uh, some of our area of expertise are site management and monetization. We also uh, have a deep understanding of e-commerce, email marketing, hosting, customer service, and ad management. So uh, you might not know us uh, under Gamma, but you might know some of our program. So we operate fame dollars. Body profit, uh, tranny revenues, live box, blazing box, porn access, and we recently launched Open Life. Uh, you might also know some of the consumer brands we manage the website for. Uh, some of our partners: Evil Angel, uh, Rocco Cifredi, There's Devil's Film, Peter North, uh, Malai Media. We also manage Carol Patrick, Sylvia Saint, White Ghetto, uh, Next Door Entertainment. Hot House, Falcon, Cold, Raging Stallion, to name a few of them. Um, our mission at Gamma Entertainment is really with the knowledge and uh, the passion of our team. We uh, aim to create value for the end users, for our partners, and for our team members. Uh, we do that by creating innovative, profitable, and uh, competitive products around the world. So we've been in business for 16 years. Um, we were lucky enough to sustain growth year over year. So today we manage over 2,000 websites, and uh, we handle over 10 million daily visitors to our properties. Uh, we do that with a team of over 150 people, based mostly in Montreal. So uh, this year alone, we've won over 30 awards, which I'm pretty proud of. So, how did we get there? Uh, that's a story I'm going to try to tell you today. Um, well, this is me, 1996. <laughs> a pretty shy teenager, uh, no girlfriend. I was uh, working in a movie theater and uh, in a video store. Uh, my best friend were computers. Who would have guessed? So, uh, back in those years, I was running what was called BBS, Bolton Board uh, Services. So basically, uh, I had uh, phone lines uh, at home and people could call my computers. So I had multiple phone lines, people could call and uh, we, they could play games, uh, write messages, uh, share files. So that was uh, in the early days before the internet really started. So eventually somebody asked me about the internet. I thought, um, I was curious to know uh, about it, so I, I didn't know. Uh, I was getting, uh, in those years, uh, probably many of you were, a lot of AOL and CompuServe free trial CDs. 
So that's really how I initially discovered the internet. I uh, basically plugged one of those CD and uh, there was uh, access to internet for, for a month. So what I discovered when uh, I, my first visit on the internet is uh, it's a great, it was a great source of adult photos. So, yeah. so I made it my passion to collect them. So using the news groups, I was uh, finding the picture, adding the one I like, adding them to my collection. So, remember I had no girlfriend, I was an 18 year old. So, eventually I had, um, I had stopped using AOL and I was using uh, now a local uh, small internet service provider in, in Montreal, calling to get access with my 50k modem, remember it was dial up back, back in those years. Uh, and with my account, uh, there was a small sp a space where I could create a website, a personal page. So I didn't have much to say about myself, so I decided to write something about my passion. So I started the Teen of the Week. The idea was that every week I would publish a new photos on that website. So I started posting in the news groups, entering uh, my, my address in the directories, and uh, soon enough I had 30,000 visitors coming every day to see my website, the Teen of the Week. Remember that was 1996, 30,000 visitors back in those days was uh, was a lot, but they didn't have as much uh, places to go as today. So I was a bit worried with all that traffic, that 30,000 visitors, that the, my ISP would start charging me. I was using really the, the, the free space they were giving me. Uh, I must have been using a third of their bandwidth with all that traffic. So um, what I did is I wrote on my website that um, if you like what I was doing, I was ask, accepting donations. And in exchange, if they would send me something, I would mail them a, a floppy disk with some photos on it, about 20 images. Yeah. So over two weeks, I received about $1,000 in, uh, in uh, money orders and, and cash. So that's where I figured, wow, there might be something there. So uh, at, the, at around the same time, uh, a surfer offered me to host my website for free. Remember, that was my, my concern, in exchange for sharing advertising revenue with, with, with that person. So I thought, that's a great idea. I'm not making any advertising revenue, so it's going to be a very inexpensive uh, solution. So um, he, we, we, uh, we registered a, a domain name, wywoman.com, and uh, I moved all my traffic there. And uh, that was really my first official source of revenue advertising. We were making a few thousand dollars per month. So, with all those visitors coming to my site to see a new image every every week, uh, eventually I was I started publishing two new images every week. Uh, people were asking me for more content. So, my idea was to start the Web Youngest Woman fan club. Oh yeah, by the way, I had renamed my site. I thought Teen of the Week was uh, uh, not politically correct. I thought that the people would think uh, there would be child porn over there. So I changed that for Web's Youngest Woman. Now that I think about it, it's not really better. <laughs> so, so I decided to, uh, to launch uh, the fan club. And the idea was I would sell an access to, uh, to the archive of the, of the previous image I had published, as well as some additional photos, for $9.95 a month. So uh, initially, they paid me uh, sending me uh, money orders and cash. Eventually, I figured that uh, they could call a 900 number and enter a PIN code, and they would get charged to their phone bill. And I would make 80% of that revenue. So that was working well. Remember, that was the early internet, so there wasn't much uh, e-commerce. So I, I had one fr a friend that was uh, able to charge uh, uh, his clients uh, using his computer. He had a software called PC Charge, and uh, he could basically punch in a credit card number and uh, make a charge on, on the people's credit card. So. What I did is I uh, programmed a CGI script that would take uh, the information people would publish on a form. It would retype it automatically in the PC charge software. Then automatically the modem would dial out to the bank to charge a credit card. So that was really uh, how I started accepting credit card uh, in the early days of uh, electronic commerce. Uh, oh, it was pretty cool because every time uh, the modem was dialing out, I knew I was making money. So I love that sound today. Uh, so I said that I, I found a hosting partner that offered to host my site for free. 
He thought everything I was doing was great. So one day he decided to uh, cut all my access to the website. Uh, he had registered a domain name. I didn't know how to do that. And he replaced all my 900 numbers and my credit card form with his own stuff. So suddenly I lost everything. And I had no more any website. So I was pissed. Yeah. So I hired a lawyer. I uh, tried to get uh, the site back. I learned that uh, lawyers uh, make pretty good money. I spent twenty twenty thousand dollars, and uh, all I got was uh, to convince the guy to change the name of the site because I didn't like having two web's youngest woman out there because I had relaunched the site under a new domain. Whoops. So I forgot something. Uh, all right, so that was one of my first lessons I learned, the importance of uh, finding business partners with who you get along very well and that have strong business ethic. Also found out that the lawyers are expensive. Um, so around that time, uh, school uh, uh, summer was over. I was uh, starting going to university. Uh, I'd started a, a computer engineering degree. I was uh, ride sharing with two friends, going to school every day. And they were always very interested to hear my stories about how I was making money on the, on the internet. So eventually, as things were growing, I, I got more and more busy with that. So they offered me uh, to give me a hand, and they basically became uh, my, my business partner. So I decided to drop out of school to focus 100% on the business, and uh, they uh, stayed in school and finished their degree. So. During that semester, I ran into um, a company called WebPower. Uh, you might know them today as iFriends. Back then, uh, they were running a site called Amateur Hardcore, and they had uh, done something very clever, uh, that they were basically paying people every time they were sending them a click. So I thought that was a great idea, because I was spending a lot of time trying to find uh, places to advertise my site, and when I was uh, buying advertising, I had no guarantee if it would work out for me or, or not. So uh, at the time, uh, in school, I was uh, taking a C++ uh, programming class. So I used what I learned in that class, and I, I programmed a software that would track uh, people's click, and uh, allow me to generate a listing of all the, 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 the sum of the clicks, and uh, issue checks uh, to affiliate. So that was uh, how Gallon Cash got born in 1997, uh, thank God, thanks to that C++ class I took uh, in school. Uh, so we built a few more sites, and uh, that's really when business exploded. We went from making tens of uh, thousands of dollars per month to hundreds of thousands of dollars per month. It was really uh, when the business exploded. Uh, during those years, we were doing a lot of networking with other uh, companies, uh, trading traffic and so on. And uh, one guy approached us with uh, the idea of uh, taking some very successful websites and exchanging traffic among uh, our, uh, these sites. So that, that person was uh, Rick. You might know Rick. He runs uh, the best porn today. So that's how basically the Why Not Network got started. It was seven websites trading traffic together. So it was a great tool to, uh, to get more traffic. and. Uh, it was a, a kind of a exclusive network, so we were proud to be one of the, the founding members of, a, of that network. Eventually, to stay in that network, because a lot of people wanted to get in, uh, Rick made it mandatory to make sure that all the content on your website is licensed. Back in those years, if you remember, I say my passion was to build my collection of photos from the news group. So we were all convinced that uh, that was a public domain. Since it was on the internet, somebody scanned it, it was nobody's property, anybody could use it to do what they wanted for it. So thanks to, to Rick in those years, uh, we learned that it's very important to respect the laws, and that's when we started licensing our content and making sure that what we sell is something that we're in a position to, to sell. So uh, our team site, was pretty novel back in those years. Uh, the teen niche wasn't something that was very, very popular. Maybe in Alden it was with the Seventeen magazine, but in the US it, was, it wasn't. So it was really hard to find that type of content. So what I did again, I used uh, the power of my website. I put a note on my site saying I was looking for photographers to uh, help me find content. So what people would do, 
is they would take Polaroid of models that uh, fit my criteria. They would mail me those Polaroid. I would approve the models. Then they would photograph the models, and they would uh, mail me the slides or the negative, which uh, we would scan to be able to put on the website. Remember, they would, this was before digital photography was as advanced as, as today. So it was a challenge to find uh, that type of content, but we really uh, were successful building a network of contributors that uh, were sending us a very, uh, very uh, good uh, photos. Uh, since it was so hard, I decided that I would give it a try. So I bought for $20,000 of uh, photo equipment. I set up a studio in my basement. I bought uh, my first digital camera. It was a three megapixel camera. It cost $8,000. Yep. So I had a full uh, studio in my basement with the backdrop and the flash and the light. But I was way too shy, so I never hired any model and never took even one picture. <laughs> yeah, so that did work uh, as planned. So business was uh, going well. Uh, my partner were about to finish school. So I was really wondering what, uh, what I wanted to do. Uh, would this be a, a long-term thing? I, I didn't know. So uh, I got somebody that offered me to buy my business. So I thought that was a very, very interesting offer. And after reflecting on it, I decided that uh, I wouldn't sell. Instead, I would try to make it a real business. So in 2000, we uh, decided to uh, open a, a real office. We rented 5,000 square foot of office space. We furnished it for 50 people, but computers. And we were really four kids working in that huge office with, with computers, but no staff. So it was a bit weird and uh, at first with the first interviews we did uh, trying to get people to work for us uh, yeah so my partners that finished school they finished their degree they also joined and came to work uh, with me full time in our new office we started hiring people and and I really tried to take the company to the next step so we started attending the trade shows uh, not only attending but exhibiting uh, those trade shows back in the early 2000s were a lot of fun. Not that today they're not fun, but uh, they were different. A lot of money was getting spent on those shows. Um, we were trying to be original and trying to get people to notice us. Uh, we were kids in that industry, so we were wearing suits and ties, trying to look uh, professional. And uh, we were trying to come up with crazy concepts. Uh, one, one year we had a, a real size tree in the boot with uh, a floor made of, of, of out of grass, and we had the uh, dollar bills in the tree. It was the money tree, and we were giving a dollar bill to everybody that would stop uh, by the boot coming from the tree. So we were real money bill. Another year, we had a money machine. You see uh, the tube over there. The idea that the money would swirl it was more like a shredder. <laughs> That's something else. Uh, in 2004, also, we uh, decided to draft. Um, a T-Rex, which is a three-wheeled uh, car. It's, a, it's made with motorcycle part. So a guy in Israel ended up winning it. So he took uh, the money. We wired him 50 grand instead of uh, the T-Rex. So I got stuck with it for a few years. Yeah. <laughs> that was fun. So I'm um, talking about the early 2000s. Uh, there really started to be a market shift. Um, competition become much harder in, the, in those years. We were paying five cents a click initially, now it was more like 20 cents a click. People started being aggressive with PPS, paper sign up. And uh, we had a, a very big problem in 2000. We were working with a company called uh, DMR for all our pro credit card processing, and they lost their ability to process. So uh, it took us a few, a, few, uh, a few weeks to get back on our feet. Our feet. We lost uh, a lot of money. Um, so from that story, we really learned that uh, the importance to not put all your eggs in the one basket, to diversify your risk. Uh, today, we try to handle uh, every critical part of our business. So we do all our processing ourselves, just because there's so much of the business that is dependent on it. We don't only work with one bank, we work with multiple banks. We had similar experience also with hosting where some O's really fucked up bad, so we ended up uh, losing money. So today, we do uh, all our website uh, server management ourselves. We have a data center in Montreal with over 50 racks of equipment that uh, we manage with uh, our internal staff. So 
also from that story, uh, we had to reinvest a lot of money in the company to make sure to, uh, to cover the loss. It was very important for us that affiliates uh, didn't have to uh, feel any impact from that. So I'm very proud to say that as of today, uh, in the last 16 years, we've never missed one affiliate payment. So in the last uh, 16 years, uh, we've seen a lot of companies come and go. Uh, we're lucky today to still be standing strong. So here's a few examples of how Gamma has grown over the years uh, up until today. So we start with photos. The internet uh, quickly evolved uh, as a bandwidth speed increase uh, to video. So we were never really content producers. And uh, trends started to emerge. Uh, the reality trend became really big in 2002. Uh, I think uh, the Bang Bros guys were the first with uh, the Bang Bus website. So we started, uh, we wanted to capitalize on that trend, but we didn't really have the know-how. So what we did is we did a joint venture with a company in Montreal. Uh, we would provide our expertise of monetizing website online. It would provide their expertise producing content. And we launched Bruno B in 2002, as well as a few other reality sites that were very, very successful. In 2003, we noticed uh, another opportun uh, opportunity. Uh, back in those years, there was a, a type of site that was very popular. They were called AVS, Age Verification System. So basically, people could protect any type of content. They could just throw a form, and people had to pay 30 bucks to prove that they were over 18 years old. So uh, a lot of sites were making money that way. And Visa and MasterCard decided to crack down on that type of site because uh, the site operators that were actually uh, billing didn't really have any control on the content. There was a lot of uh, bestiality, child porn, as well as uh, a lot of copyright infringement that were getting sold uh, using uh, those, those type of sites. So we decided to launch uh, an adult entertainment network. So the idea is we would provide people with uh, free hosting, we'd provide them with all the credit card billing they need, we would provide them with the content, all they would have to do is build a website and market it. We would handle everything else. So that was a very successful. Uh, the website Porn Access grew to be 204 on Alexa. That was a few years back. Remember that this was before the two sites that get a massive amount of traffic today. So that was a, quite an accomplishment for us to reach that rank with, uh, on Alexa. We were so focused on that business venture that uh, all our other project kind of went uh, sideways. But we were lucky because that one was very successful. In 2006, we had uh, another opportunity. Um, we partnered with, uh, with somewhat a very good relationship with studios and porn stars. And we agreed to create a new business venture where we would bring our expertise, in monetizing online websites, to studios that had very strong brands, very good content, but that were not very successful online. So we created and launched Fame Dollars, um, which is very successful today. Uh, you've seen the, the roster of a partner we have in that program at the beginning. So it took us over two years for that uh, business, uh, business to become profitable. Uh, around the same year, we also did a joint venture for Buddy Profit. We basically partnered with people that have very good understanding uh, and a good position within the gay market to launch the Body Profit uh, program. Uh, again, our partners brought to the table expertise we didn't have, and we brought what we knew to do best, which is monetizing websites online. So again, we were so focused on those two new ventures that everything else kind of went sideways and was neglected. But luckily, those uh, projects were very successful. So what we did in 2007 to try to, try to um, to do better is we decided to organize everything in division where me and every one of my partner would handle a separate division. So we kind of split the business in silos that allowed us to make sure that every business unit would get uh, enough resource uh, to be able to continue grow and, uh, and do well within the industry. It also helped us separate uh, all those, uh, those partnership and joint venture we had and make sure there was no conflict of interest. 2009. 
uh, we uh, got another opportunity. We bought a business in Montreal that was the, that is doing webcams. Uh, we bought Innoveo. So that allowed us to, um, to gain knowledge of, of that space. Uh, since that company was in Montreal, we were able to, um, to bring all the staff over to our office. So that was a great addition to our know-how. 2009, well, that's when traffic side, the tube side started to appear. So initially, I didn't believe in that business model at all. We had in the past ran um, free host, where people could host any file. And we had huge issue with uh, copyrights, child porn, and also uh, the bandwidth was very expensive. So when I started those, uh, seeing those sites appear, I didn't believe they would work. I, there was no way the business model could uh, make it profitable. I was wrong. Uh, today, uh, I think uh, some people are very successful running to the site. They're also successful doing it legally. So what we've done over the last uh, two years is uh, three years? Yeah, three years is we've invested uh, buying two sites and trying to build a know-how so that uh, we can monetize uh, free traffic as well. Uh, we also developed uh, media buying expertise since uh, a lot of the traffic shifted from being on TGP to being on tube sites, so we, uh, we, we need to be able to grab a piece of that uh, traffic. 2011, that's when we really started having growing pains. Uh, we were initially four people, that grew to 50, that grew to 100. And uh, I can tell you managing over 100 people, you don't do it the same way that you manage 50. So we were, like I said, separate in business units, so it was a nightmare. One unit was developing something, the, the other unit was developing the same thing. So we were, were not being very effective. So we had kind of had lost sight of the bigger picture. So what we've been really doing in the last two years is trying to solidify so that we're in a position again to be able to take on more opportunities. So we focus on paying a lot of technological debt. Uh, having been in business for 16 years, you can imagine there is some part of the, our software that is today very old, but it was even older before we uh, started uh, refactoring stuff and updating uh, our technology to make our website easier to maintain. We've also worked on trying to define a clear mission, vision, vision, and values to give a sense of direction to all our employees. Uh, we've invested a lot also trying to develop our staff and make them better at what they do. So uh, I talked about mission, vision, values. I shared with you a bit earlier what our mission is. Uh, our vision at Gamma is really to become a one-stop shop for the adult entertainment. And we really do that uh, focusing on our passion, our knowledge, uh, collaboration, trust, and innovation. This is really the values that all our team members need to have to be uh, successful within uh, our company. Another thing we did, uh, we adopted at the beginning of the year, is the Agile met methodology. Um, running so many websites, a lot of what we do is software development. So uh, that's really something I would recommend for anything that uh, for anybody that uh, have programmers. If you have a team of uh, five or more people, it has really helped us a lot. So uh, without going too much into detail, Agile is really about doing very short development cycle. Our sprints are two weeks, focusing on what brings the most value to the business, and after two weeks, quickly getting feedback to make sure you're still working on the right priorities. So that has allowed us to empower our teams. They are in a position to take more decisions on how to deliver the value. And every two weeks, our teams kind of commit on what they're going to deliver within the next two weeks. So that has really helped us be more productive, be more effective, and continue growing. So today we have eight agile teams that are using the Scrum methodology. So I recommend to anybody that is not familiar, that is working with developers, look into that. So after 16 years in business, uh, there's a few lessons uh, we've learned. I thought I could share a few uh, with, uh, with you. So first, I would say stay focused. Okay, I say uh, there was a few times we uh, kind of lost sight of the other project because we were so focused on one project, but I'm convinced that's the reason we were successful. 
So when you've been doing something for such a long time, it's easy to get uh, diverted by new ideas or stuff that you find more interesting. You need to be focused on what you're best at doing. That's the first kind of advice I'd like to give you. Find the right people. Without our team, we wouldn't be here today. So you need to make sure that you treat them well because you're never going to go as far as uh, where they're going to take you. Find the right partners. If uh, there's one common trend in my speech uh, today, uh, how we've grown, is to join an venture and partnership. Okay, so finding the, the right partners, people that share similar values to you, is very, very important. I've been in business with my shareholders and business partners, some of them for over 16 years, and it's the only reason we still get along together today is because we share similar values. So finding the right partners is really important. Well, keep your deal clean. Don't try to screw up people. Never propose a deal if it's not one that you would accept. You wouldn't accept. Avoid legal action. I got divorced recently, so it's very expensive. The lawyers always end up uh, making most of the profit. So sometimes sometime it means stepping on your ego um, and going to the table and agreeing to stuff you're convinced you're right. But uh, believe me, most of the time, you underestimate the cost of legal action, so try to avoid it. Well, be fair. That's the reason I think uh, we have so many business partners. We try to always be fair with them. We try to be fair with affiliates. So try to be fair with the people you do business with, especially if, like us, you're in here for the long term. Well, don't take anything for granted. 16 years, I've seen our industry evolve and change a lot. So make sure you stay up to date and you don't uh, sit on your ass for too long. Make sure you stay up to date. You never know what will happen tomorrow. And finally, stay challenged. Okay? It's really important that you do something you like. I'm really passionate about what I do, and so are most of my team members. And I think it's really one reason for our success. So. I'm very proud to be uh, standing in front of you today and how much uh, um, we've grown over the last uh, 16 years. I'm really thankful for the trust that affiliates and business partners put uh, in us. I'm very proud of um, each one of our team members that uh, without them we wouldn't be here today. So as far as the future, uh, we're, like I said, uh, our mission, uh, we're really focused on creating value. We're going to accomplish that by making sure we offer quality content, a good consumer experience, high quality software. We're very focused on long-term partnership. Might be some acquisition down the road since uh, we want to be the one-stop shop for adult entertainment. And of course, we're going to continue investing in our staff and our, our organization. Well, that's it. So, thank you. So we're going to take a, I'm going to take a question, if anybody has any question. Yes, uh, there's a mic that is going to come to you. Where did you get the name Gamma N and Ah, uh, that's a good question. I don't remember. <laughs> it was one of those nights where I wrote all kind of name on a piece of paper and somehow Gamma came. Uh, I wish I had a better explanation. <laughs> uh, any other question? Over there. Who's the microphone? All right. What part of your, uh, what percentage of your business is live chat and, uh, compared to static chat? And sure. Which is the trend right now? Sure. Um, we found it very challenging to grow the live cabin business. It's a very competitive market. I would say it's probably about 10% of our revenues, so it's a small portion. Okay, we are the, the biggest part of our revenue really comes from our pay cycle operation, so running on a, on a monthly recurring business model. Yes. It's, it's a good question. Uh, we're, we're not seeing that much growth. 
uh, in that sector, but we're not putting that much energy into it. Okay, we're much focused on our partnership than uh, our in-house uh, live chat uh, solution. Carl, with regards to the Scrum methodology, you've got eight Scrum teams, you've yes. got four business partners. Are each of the four business partners the product owners, or do you delegate? Uh, what was the last part of your question? Each of the four business partners, yeah. are they the product owners? Yeah, okay, so what we have, we have uh, different product groups. Most of our, uh, each one of our affiliate programs have a product team. The product team is, uh, as a, some marketing people, some sales management people, some BI people, and they basically uh, decide what are the priorities, what is going to bring the most value to the business, and they work with an agile team that is from five to 12 people to deliver what has been agreed on. So we have about half the teams that are working for external product, like $10, like Buddy Profit, and half the team that are working for internal product, like our billing, our email marketing solution, even our hosting is run uh, using the Scrum methodology. Okay. Hey Carl, it's uh, Dominic Ford, how are you? I'm over here. Uh, all right. Hey, um, so I was just wondering, uh, Nextdoor Studios was, in my view, one of the largest brands in, in the gay content production. So it is. Well, overnight it seems like it shut down and, and all of the exclusives were let go and, and Stefan put a thing out about being more of a talent agent now than a production company. I was just wondering what, what happened, what, was the, what precipitated that and what's going on there? Well, for a very long time we've been running with the Nextdoor Studios a lot of exclusive model. Um, our studies have shown us that people kind of get tired of seeing the same model again and again and again. So we've started to slowly move away from that model, more focusing on good sex than uh, with great looking person uh, than the, the actual uh, solo models. So yeah. you're still you're still producing now. That's oh yes, oh right. yes, cool. More than ever. How you doing? Um, as a content producer with a few pay sites, uh, do you suggest um, maybe going into the affiliate market and getting some you know, revenue through there as a good business model? Or do you think that we should just continue doing with our own pay sites and not care about anybody else's? If you run a pay site, you need to do it all. Okay, you need to run affiliate uh, system and have affiliates sending traffic. You need to do, be doing media buying. You need to use all the social uh, as much as you can to get traffic to your site. You need to be posting on the tube sites to get your content and your brand out there. You need to do it all. It's, there's no easy solution. It's a lot of work. It takes time to get your brand known. But eventually, if you have good content, it's going to pay off. Thank you. You're welcome. Hey, Carl. Uh, one quick question I want to ask you. You mentioned in some of the slides that you know some of the ventures took like about two years for the investment, to, the investment to come back. Are you mentioning until you got uh, like you were not in the red anymore, or until the initial investment had been come back? Until the investment had uh, got paid back. And how long then between you, like before day zero and the day where you get a positive cash flow between okay. those two years? Uh, my Primary experience friends. with uh, starting a project, it usually takes between 12 and 16 months to get in the red, in, in the black. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, it's, it's a long process, especially uh, if, if you launch a complicated product, uh, if you have a lot of software development, if you're launching a new brand, it takes time really to, to, to build up and to uh, have the revenues cover the expense, from my experience. Thank you. You're welcome. One question. There's one over there. What do you say? Are you going to translate? <laughs> uh, I've been watching Evil Angels exponential growth. It's fantastic. While all the other pay sites are trending down, Evil is trending up, and that's you guys. Two questions. One, to what do you attribute that? And two, do you see that capping off, or do you see them just growing and growing and growing? We see them growing. Uh, it's really a partnership. Okay, so we do as the best we can managing their website and marketing it. But they also have a lot to do as far as producing good content. And uh, they update the site 
three, there's like three updates every day. It's crazy the amount of content that is published on, on their website. So I think it's a mix of both our expertise and what we're able to do, and the fact that it's really an amazing brand with some amazing content, and people stick a long time when they join. And hopefully we'll continue seeing them grow. When it comes to your, when it comes to your partnership with, um, with the pay sites, with the companies who are creating the content, um, do you have ownership in those websites, or your, no. how, so, do you pre so, uh, how do you prevent them uh, from uh, leaving you? We don't. So most of the time, and that kind of partnership, okay, it's a, it's a contractual agreement because we put a lot of work to migrate them to launch their site and to encode their content. Uh, so it, it's a big investment on our part to, to do that. So there is a contractual. So most of the time, it's three to five years, but. We have occasion where partners wanted to leave. This happened once, only once. And uh, even if there was a contract, we let them go. But we don't want to work with people that don't want to work with us. It's really, it takes a, a big commitment for, for, from our part to be able to re, uh, answer every uh, demand from a partner. So it's a lot of work, and most of the time, everybody is happy in that uh, partnership. So I'll knock on wood, uh, and that continues. You mentioned that uh, Evo has three up video updates a day. Uh, what's your philosophy on updates? How many updates, how long should they be uh, to achieve success? That's a good question. Um, what the rule we'd like to follow, okay, is the minimum is one update a week. Okay, but uh, we've seen a lot more success with side that update more often. But it's, it's expensive. To, uh, to, to publish uh, a lot of content per week. So I would say if, if your member base can support it, can, can support uh, having a, a high budget for updates, you, you should be doing it because uh, people, uh, ideally they would go to the website every day and they would see something fresh. So most of the time what we do is we build a network. So we take uh, like five, five or six or eight websites together and uh, each one of those websites gets one, daily uh, one weekly update. So by signing up to the website, they get access to the network. So we're sure that they get access to at least one update within the network every week, every day. Yeah, but uh, there is, everybody could have their theory on that. Uh, uh, it depends, I guess, also on the type of content, how easy it is to find, and, and so on. One question over there. Hi. Um, Outside of North America, what would you say are some of your fastest growing markets? Hmm. Well, most of our revenues still today come from the US and, and Canada. I would say Germany, France, and Spain are where the secondary market where we're doing the best. I haven't seen a trend of a, an emerging market like uh, China becoming the most popular, and I don't think that's going to happen, but uh, I can say there we're doing substantially well with uh, Brazil or some of those uh, emerging countries. There was a question over there. Um, with the 16 years that you've been in business, um, with the knowledge you have now, what would you have wished that you would have done Five years, like with the knowledge you have now, five years into the business, what would you wish you had done then? Five years into business or 16 years ago? No, no, now that you're 16 years into the business. Yeah. What would you have wished you would have done back? Well, one thing I wish I would have done years ago is register more domain names. Now, every time I have an idea, it's so hard to find a good domain name. That's one thing. But other than that, uh, there was a few, a few uh, occasions when I was talking about lawsuits, so we got in, involved, involved in a few of those. Uh, today, with what I know, we always underestimate the cost of hiring the lawyers, and it always ends up getting settled anyway. I, I would do everything I can if I had to go back, if I had the opportunity to avoid those. Even if you, you're convinced you're right, that you end up losing. I can't think of anything better to uh, suggest. Thank you. You just mentioned that it's uh, hard to find a good domain name. Did you participate in the GTLD uh, application process no. recently? And if so, you didn't, get, you didn't get any of those? No. 
and we're way too busy with everything we do to uh, to be able to, uh, to 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 submit that kind of thing. We didn't think of it. We didn't spend energy on that. No. Yeah. So, any other question? No. Oh, over there. Talking about TLDs, what about triple X? Yeah, we're not in support of triple X. Uh, we've uh, done some defensive registration. We're not using any of those domains. We've also advised all and uh, all our partners uh, not to participate. Uh, we believe there's a huge risk that people start using that to eventually censor, uh, put more censorship on, on adult material. So we're not in support even today, even if I think they're very successful. Uh, we try not to anchor them. So that's it. All right, so I'm glad you, um, you took uh, so much time to listen to uh, what I had to say. Uh, here's my contact information if you want to get in touch with me. You're welcome to contact me if you want some advice, if you have any opportunity to present to me, or if you would just want to say hello. So thank you. Thanks a lot for your time. <laughs>